There's a trend in the Ninja Foodie community, especially on Facebook, for taking a roast and using the dehydration function to cook it. Now, I believe this may have been started in the UK and people were raving about the results. Some people are having trouble wrapping their head around why would I dehydrate a roast? So I thought that I would show you exactly how it's done and show you the results. Welcome to the Salted Pepper, where we cook for real life using real food and we keep it real simple. Today, I'm gonna to use the dehydration setting to cook this sirloin tip roast. And that might sound kind of odd. Why would you dehydrate it? You know, because we think about dehydrating as like making beef jerky or dehydrating fruits or dehydrating vegetables. But honestly, like I teach in my online course, the dehydration function is simply cooking at a lower temperature. So you can do it with larger cuts of meat, and a roast is a perfect example. So first I'm gonna trim it up and season it up. For this recipe, it's not really a recipe, it's more of a technique, I'm just gonna use simple salt and pepper, two parts salt to one part pepper, and I will just sprinkle it over the top. But first, I wanna get it trimmed up a little bit. So if I see some of things, let me move this out of the way, see some things here like this, I might kinda of just trim them off. You don't have to get too crazy with it, but I do like to trim as much off here as I can, like that. Then here, this is more important, okay? Getting some of this tissue out, and on the back you can really see it. So I will take my knife and just sort of slide underneath. And I'm not so much worried about the fat as I am the connective tissue. I like to try to get it out because I want this to be as tender as possible for nice roast beef. This roast is, like I said before, a sirloin tip and it's about two and a half pounds. But this technique would work with any size roast. Your timing would just be different. So the larger the roast, the longer it's gonna take. Also, you have to take into consideration how you like your meat cooked. I like mine medium rare to rare, so I'm only gonna go two and a half hours with this, but your preference might be to go for three or three and a half. So it's very important that you uh, cook to temperature, not time, okay? All right, so now I'm gonna take my seasoning mix. What you choose to season with is completely up to you. You can even season ahead of time. Dry brining is a great choice for this type of meat. So you can season it, wrap it in some, some saran wrap and put it in the refrigerator for a day or two. Or you can even um, like just leave it open and dry it a little bit. Some people uh, like it that way. I usually wrap mine, that's just my preference. The amount of salt and pepper in this dish is two tablespoons of salt, one tablespoon of regular pepper. Ordinarily, I would use a coarse uh, black pepper, like a restaurant pepper or fresh cracked pepper, but I didn't have any, so I'm just going with regular table pepper. And then the salt is um, uh, fine grind sea salt. All right, now let me wash up my hands and then we will get this in to dehydrate. All right, so I'm using the eight quart newer OL series. This is the 701. This recipe will work though in any Ninja Foodie or even the Instant Pot Duo Crisp if you have the dehydration function, okay? So it's no, not special to this uh, appliance here. You don't need the steam and crisp function to do this because we're not even gonna use it. I like to use the rack in the low position. That's my preference. But if you have a crisping plate, because you have you know a six and a half quart, you can use that. You can um, you can use anything that you want to sit the beef on. But I like it to be elevated about an inch or two. Okay, and that's just so that the air circulates all the way around. So let's go ahead and get this on the rack. And actually, I'll put the rack in, and then put the beef in like that. Okay, 
Then we wanna close the lid. All right, so let me talk about the dehydration setting. So the dehydration setting, you know, is designed to dehydrate foods, pull the moisture out, but it does that through dry circulating heat at low temperatures over a long period of time. But it is essentially the same function as the air crisp or the bake roast, just at lower temperatures. So it's kind of like putting, like if your oven could go to 200 or even 190 and you setting a roast in there to slow roast, this is the same exact thing. The circulating air and the heat is going to cook the roast and it's gonna create this really nice crust. In my test recipes, when I tested this out, I did not have to sear afterwards or anything. It was beautiful. So what I found for me, the best setting was dehydrate. So we're gonna go ahead and turn the Ninja Foodie on. You want your slider all the way over to the right, okay, if you're using this model. If not, you don't have the slider, you're just gonna set the dehydration. And then we're gonna turn the knob until we get to the dehydration setting, which is right there. We're gonna change our temperature to 160 by pushing the buttons over here. And our time is gonna go to two and a half hours. There we go, and then hit start. And now I do absolutely nothing for two and a half hours. I'll check an internal temperature and then make some decisions of whether or not um, I need to go any longer or if it's done at that point. So it's pretty much set it and forget it. And I do recommend that you leave it in there at least two hours without even opening the lid, okay, to give it a chance to cook. So what happens is, you know, the food cooks from the outside in in almost all cases. So what happens is that hot air is transferring heat to the outer part of the meat. It heats it at a very slow and low temperature, but over a period of time, it will warm everything through and cook it to a perfect internal temperature. For me, that's gonna be medium rare. So I like to see it at about 135 or so. Um, but again, if you like it well done, you can go longer. But keep in mind that this technique might not be the best for a well done roast because you're going to dry out the outer part quite a bit. You're gonna get such a tough crust that it's gonna be inedible, okay? So probably this is best if you like it rare, medium rare to medium. If you wanted it medium well to well done, I would probably pressure cook or use another method. Okay, so two and a half hours is up. Let's go ahead and take a peek and see what it looks like. Well, it looks good. You know, it looks different from my test batch, but that's because I used a different rub. I had more of a crust on it because I used just a different kind of rub that has a little bit of sugar in it, I think. But anyway, it looks pretty good. Now let's take a temperature, and then of course, the most important thing is how does it taste? And how tender is it, right? So when you're taking a temperature, you wanna go into the thickest part. And I am at about 137. So remember, I wanted it to be around 135. So that is perfect. Now I'm gonna go ahead and let it rest for a few minutes. Although what I've noticed with this low, slow cooking, it really is not as important because the juices are redistributing in this slow cook. So we don't have as much moisture loss as we do sometimes if we do a hot sear and then you wanna definitely let it rest. But I see a little bit of juice coming out there, so I am gonna let it rest for about 10 minutes and then I will carve it and give it a taste. All right, here we go. So the first thing I'm gonna do is slice it from the end here and I'm gonna slice it thinly which is how I prefer to eat it. But I'm also gonna uh, cut a thicker slice so that if you wanted to serve, you know, a thick piece of roast beef, like, you know, with a Sunday dinner, I'll let you know how the texture and, and everything is. All right, here we go. Well, it's cooked beautifully. Look at that. Wow, that is really amazing. All right, that looks really good. All right, then let me just go straight down here and we'll cut a little bit of a thicker piece here. All right, it looks amazing. It's gorgeous. It is perfectly cooked, oh my gosh. 
All right, it looks amazing, but you know what matters most is texture and flavor, of course. So let me start with the thin slice, which I would think would be a little bit more tender than the thicker slice, but let's see. I've been wrong before. Mmm. Oh my gosh, it's so good. Mmm. It's not nearly as tender as if you sous vide it, that's for sure, but mm, it's good. The taste is phenomenal. And the salt and pepper is perfect on the outside. All right, now here's a thicker slice here. Not my preference. To me, it's too tough. I recommend slicing it thin. All right, what I'm gonna do real quick, because that was pretty tough. So I'm gonna go on the inside a little bit more and just see if it doesn't get a little bit more tender towards the center here, just to be fair. Because I know some people really like their roast beef thickly sliced. Not really. It's delicious, but it is not Super tender. I would prefer to try it with a top sirloin round. I think that's gonna give a better result. That's what I use for my perfect roast beef in the Ninja Foodi. And what I do in that recipe is I use broil for a short period of time and then let the residual heat cook the beef all the way through. I think the results are better, personally, okay? However, I will also say that in my test recipe, the beef came out more tender. I did the exact same thing. The exact same cut of meat, the exact same brand of meat, the exact same weight, okay? Everything was the same, except of course it came from a different cow. So sometimes, no matter what we do, your steak's gonna be a little bit tougher, you know? I mean, sometimes it's just about the beef itself. And that's what I'm thinking here. This one's tougher than, like I said, my, my test recipes. However, if you want to do something that's low and slow, dehydrate is a perfect option. Two and a half hours, it's a really great result. And if you like a real chewy, beefy, you know, type of steak or roast beef, you're gonna love this. I just, I'm a filet girl. I like it to be really super tender, melt in your mouth. So anything that's a little bit tough, it's too tough for me, okay? If you weren't gonna do the broil method and you didn't wanna spend two and a half hours, try sous vide this cut of meat. I'm gonna get to that real soon and show you the results.